very hearty good evening to all of you. Center of Excellence in Safety Engineering and, and Analytics, RT Kharagpur, welcomes all the participants to the 11th weekend talk on uh, safety engineering management and analytics. This program is conducted under Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, which is uh, conducted by the Government of India, Ministry of Education, to commemorate 75 years of India's independence. So we start with this wonderful shloka uh, and message. Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, which means that let us move from ignorance to the truth, from darkness to the light, and from death to immortality. With this, myself, uh, Mom Mitra from uh, Tata Steel, along with our co moderators, Sovik Sinjana and Ashish, welcome you to this begin talk. Uh, there is an announcement that we have an international conference on maintenance intelligent asset management. Uh, it will be in the blended mode. Uh, and um, Federation University Australia, Center of Excellence in uh, Safety Engineering and Analytics, IIT Kharagpur, uh, it, or, are organizing this along with Asset Management Council Australia, Manipal Academy of Higher Education India. So the date is 12 to 15th of December 2021. Abstract submission deadline 10 September. Uh, notification of abstract acceptance is 20th September. And the paper submission deadline and notification of acceptance is 15th and 30th October, respectively. Why are you telling this group? Yes, sir. Mom, you should tell why you are, why you are, what are you are expecting from this group for this conference? To submit, to submit the abstracts uh, within the uh, dates and deadline on these topics. We request all to uh, submit the abstracts. Please note the dates and uh, submit your abstracts and then the papers in the within the target deadlines. So with this, uh, we already have uh, a short chat and we formally welcome the dignitaries on the virtual uh, dais. So uh, today our speaker is Dr. Diptendu Das. Uh, he is Senior Scientific Officer and Lead Inspector of Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, Government of India. So he passed out from, uh, from IIT Kharagpur and he did his PhD from IIT Bombay. He joined British uh, in Oxygen as a process engineer and worked in various turnkey project executions and process design for cryogenic and non-cryogenic pressure swing absorption uh, plants. Later on, he joined Defense uh, DRDO, Ministry of Defense, as scientist and worked in process fire and explosive safety and quality assurance field for solid rocket pro propulsion. Subsequently, he joined AERB under Department of Atomic Energy Government of India as a scientific officer. Since then, he's involved in scientific safety research, safety review, safety document development, and regulatory inspection of Department of Atomic Energy units. And he's presently heading industrial and fire safety section of Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. And he was also involved in the developing of harmonized risk assessment guidance manual for Ministry of Environment, Government of India. And he is designated as a lead inspector under AERB, uh, Atomic Energy Rules of Dep uh, Department of Atomic Energy, Government of India. And his topic today is fire safety analysis and evaluation in industries. So ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very uh, blessed to have him as an expert speaker today. And I would request uh, our chairman, COE SEA, uh, Professor J. Maiti, to formally welcome our expert speaker. Yeah, thank you, Mom. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Das. Uh, it's our pleasure to have you today. And uh, you all already know about our Center of Excellence in Safety Engineering and Analytics. And about Dr. Das, I, I do not uh, extend the introduction already mom has said dr das is is a very good researcher as well as administrator and particularly in the domain of safety quality and occupational health he is pioneer in industry like uh, a, a, your uh, atomic nuclear industry's point of view so i welcome you dr das for this uh, we can talk and this is basically the 12th week we can talk and uh, uh, I hope the all the participants uh, today will be extremely benefited from your talk. 
So now the stage is yours, Dr. Das. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening and hello, friends from the abroad, uh, if anybody is present. And uh, uh, I am thankful to again uh, Professor Krishna, Obi Krishna, and uh, Professor Maiti. They are doing a wonderful job to bring all the safety professionals and uh, researchers in the same field, same platform. And I am happy to see they are doing a great job. And again, I am thankful for inviting the, uh, the to deliver a talk here. And uh, definitely, this is a uh, uh, area where I'll be talking today. It is uh, fire and uh, safety, and uh, basically, I will cover the explosion part as well. So it is the challenge for the uh, safety professionals to design, develop, and uh, to model. And I will share my professional experience so that uh, you can you can correlate in your respective industries and acad academicians. You can find the challenges and how we can uh, model. And uh, now I am starting my presentation. So uh, this uh, particularly fire and explosion safety evolution. So what I will try to uh, talk here, basically how this you know fire and explosion safety is important for an. Uh, industry, how this slowly it has come up to a uh, level, and if you, you, all of you know that uh, nuclear defense, aviation industries, these are the very critical industries where safety is given utmost importance, and particularly nuclear industries uh, where you know that uh, you cannot take any chance because the if you see the consequence, if anything happens, the consequence is very very high. And the uh, so frequency has to be very very low, and that's why the fire can be a common cause effect for uh, such kind of you know industry uh, if it is not properly maintained. So uh, the lesson learned from any industries, any uh, uh, any uh, incident or accident, immediately it is being shared. Got disconnected, I think, sir. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Is it visible? Is it audible? Yeah. Yes, you were sir. Disconnected for a minute uh, for thirty second. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what happens? Uh, what I am telling that uh, this uh, fire and explosion uh, safety. Uh, what I will try to tell you about the design aspects, the modeling aspects, and the experience I will share because uh, uh, and I will talk about what is the uh, regulatory role of the uh, uh, in atomic energy. And then I will brief because this is a very vast topic, each and every model design and all my uh, tech PhD students who are doing it's an individual field. But here I will give you an idea overall uh, this particular area so that each of you academicians can appreciate how to model, how to design, and uh, particularly in nuclear industries is uh, giving a lot of uh, importance on safety so that we should not take any chance and uh, any lesson learned from any national, international, any event. We call it, you know, if you can Google, you will find that international nuclear event scale like you know the you know seismic seismic you are uh, getting one to seven scale or something similarly here uh, all over the world if any event is happening depending on the safety significance and safety significance we make a zero one two or we'll grade uh, based on the the uh, the public uh, there's a public environment impact it has been graded and all the worlds all the nuclear community we come to a common platform that we can tell about this incident if it is a zero or if it is a one for example fukushima if it is a seven or chernobyl it is a INES scale seven so this uh, means that every country will say the same impact and this is a common platform and all the lesson learned will be immediately taken for all the country and we are abiding by the conventional of nuclear safety so now i'll talk about the theory and the uh, uh, theory and the modeling aspects and my some of my professional experience the slide is not changing is it uh, okay i have to come in the slide i think 
Yeah. Now you see that in my talk, I'll co cover about the little bit of introduction where I'll talk about the importance of uh, regulations. Self-regulation is, of course, is the best. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the in India, what is the statutory provision for the fire, explosions, and overall safety? Now I'll talk about fire basic theory. Then I'll talk about the principle and approaches of fire safety, where I will cover fire hazard analysis, fire ratings. These are the two important things. Then I will talk about the different models of fire. Then I'll talk about the different types of an explosion model and in fire simulations, how we can carry out. And I will talk based on my experience and the, some case studies. And finally, to, uh, I'll cover the conclusion as of uh, all the safety professionals, engineers, and the scientists you can think of and in, in your respective industries and research area, what you can do in this area. So you see that uh, Atomic Energy Regulatory uh, Board, it established uh, 1983. And in India, Atomic Energy Act 1962 governs the uh, the all the regulations and it talks about the safety aspects of uh, of the in India and uh, Dr. Bhava has uh, has thought of uh, the first thing to establish in the nuclear in India. Then uh, the, he has developed the safety first, and that is a really good platform. And uh, initially, it started with PRC, and now it is independently. Uh, it is now independent uh, board that is Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, and this board actually ensure that ionizing radiation and nuclear energy in India does not cause undue risk to the health and people uh, and, and environment. Now, under our Atomic Energy Commissions, you can see uh, Atomic Energy Commission is the topmost body, and under this independent body is Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, under Government of India, Department of Atomic Energy. And the Department of Atomic Energy, you see that all the R&D sector uh, we are regulating, that is BRC, IGCAR, RRCAT, VCC, AMD, and you can see that uh, sometimes I find based on my expertise and uh, the auditing in the fire and safety audits, I find that sometimes the research area, they're a little lagging because they think that uh, actually it is not having that uh, fire potential or uh, they are little safer zone, but it is not. I feel IG card, for example, in our one of the research unit is having handling lot of sodium. So they are giving utmost importance on the fire. So all other industries like BRC, RRCAD, VCC, and even IIT also, while I was, uh, I was doing my PhD days, I can give you a small example where I was uh, carrying my research. I found one of my next two PhD student, he was uh, in a hot plate, he was putting a, you know, uh, a bottle, a phenol bottle, I still remember. He was trying to melt it. It was a semi-solid uh, uh, bottle, I mean, semi-solid chemical was there, something of phenol. And you know, phenol itself is a carcinogenic. And he was trying to melt it so that he can use in his research. And the bottle was totally closed, sealed. And he was trying to heat it so that that semi-solid condition becomes liquefied and he can use for his experiment. And it blasted, you know, in the lab itself. So uh, such kind of small things can occur. And uh, of course, potential was uh, that incident was less, but such kind of thing can happen in any R&D unit. That's why in our nuclear industry, even PRC, IGCAR, RRCAT, VCC, AMD, Atomic Mineral Divisions, all these R&D units, we are giving utmost importance of uh, safe, uh, safety and they are doing very well. Similarly, the public undertaking like NPCIL, uh, Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited, all the nuclear reactors, you know, the safety is the topmost priority. Bhabini is an, our first uh, breeder reactor in India. That is, uh, that is prototype first beta reactor is coming. So they are also in the world. That is the first time uh, we are uh, exploring the uh, uh, this sodium, you know, as a liquid sodium as a fuel. A lot of fire challenges is there, and they are doing very good job. And Uranium Corporation of India Limited, IREL, and ECIL Electronic Corporation of India Limited, they are developing a lot of detect uh, detectors. They are doing a lot of you know, sensors and a uh, lot of you know, the, for defense and a uh, lot of research work is going on there. And it is coming under atomic energy. And our industries, if you see the heavy water plant, nuclear fuel complex, board of radiation isotope technology. Uh, and then uh, these, uh, these are the industries we are uh, regulating where only these, this like any other chemical plants or chemical industries. 
and uh, of course we are having other industry service sectors and also like saha institute nuclear physics tata and uh, tifr they are our aided institution now you see that uh, function of airb we are developing safety documents so india if you if, i request i request adar please mute there is a lot of echo there is a lot of echo uh, yeah so uh, now it is now it is okay now see that uh, we are developing the safety documents because uh, uh, like our statutory uh, practice act rules uh, there is we are develop i think there is a little echo is going i again request if anybody is um, mic is on please uh, put up now Amit, please un please mute all the mics except the speaker yeah so uh, the speaker so these are open uh, anybody can use uh, this uh, uh, safety documents are available our website certain other than some uh, restricted document classified uh, many things are open particularly airb uh, standards uh, you can use for uh, uh, in fact in india if you find that oil uh, why is the oil india safety director they are do, uh, developing good standards and i can tell the other industry that drdo also developing their uh, pamphlet but it's very classified in nature so that it is not available in open literature whereas uh, airb we are working for the public so that our public should not get any harm of uh, uh, because of ionizing and uh, uh, radiation that's why we are uh, uh, open to public and uh, brc in that way uh, is classified on all other facility uh, we are regulating and brc is regulated by brc safety councils now you see that safety research licensing of key operating personals because a uh, nuclear industry you cannot operate unless you are getting license it is highly sensitive so that all licensing uh, an engineer must have to go go like uh, you know mtech or uh, there is a thorough two years course and then they have to go for all the licensing and uh, they have to pass even the all the safety and with very you know the criteria passing criteria may be 80% 90% so that has to be the you know the uh, competency level if a nuclear operator works on the uh, nuclear systems now review and emergency preparedness uh, and public because emergency preparedness is the one area uh, all of you have heard about fukushima fukushima the main problem was that emergency preparedness we find, found that even the uh, international atomic energy agency they have given a guideline that uh, 20 millisievert to 100 millisievert in fact that much of radiations there is no you know the uh, 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 fruit there is no proven uh, any uh, body effect in that uh, such a low level of radiation whereas it is a I, international atomic energy has a given guidelines that if anybody is getting this kind of dose 20 millisievert, millisievert and above the country can evacuate but uh, we found that because of the evacuation or the emergency uh, uh, process many people got you know affected so much more than the nobody died because of the radiation of virus emergency evacuation people got affected so in india also we have taken you know, a lot of improvement in emergency because uh, uh, that is the uh, area where we found from the lesson learned we have uh, improved and uh, all over india in the world in fact uh, a lot of we have on site emergency off site emergency but the criteria we have modified and along with the ndma we have uh, developed we are developing for the nuclear emergency right now now you see that i'll talk about now uh, i'll talk about now fire basics theory now you see that fire is basically a chemical reaction but uh, if you, all of you must have uh, seen that rusting or the corrosion that is also a chemical reaction but only difference is that that is a very slow chemical reaction so because of the slow uh, chemical reaction uh, that uh, hazard is not there but whereas fire is a very very uh, hazardous because uh, if it is uh, if it is you know uh, the the the, uh, the re rate of reaction is so fast that's why you, in fact the taking of any mitigation actions you are not getting any chance uh, we were not getting any time to uh, do, uh, do some mitigating actions or evacuation whereas in the explosion it is further dangerous because it is a microsecond phenomena if something happens really you don't have any time to take any you know uh, mitigating measures that's why explosion is further dangerous and this fire if you chemical reaction if it 
you if you see it is uh, having three arms like fuel oxygen and uh, ignition source now the idea is that if you can remove any of the arms then fire can stop so that's why all the fire extinguishing uh, fire mitigation measures are all the efforts are given to uh, take out one of this arm that is fuel or a ignition source but you know that ignition source sometimes it is having very very low i can tell you even so it is, maybe it is a order of millijoules so even there are some like sodium azide or some chemicals is there even in the starching or in the by uh, friction of your hand that can generate some kind of ignition source or static electricity enough uh, to get uh, cause such kind of thing as ignition so there are a lot of accident in the worldwide on you know even in the static electricity so that is also one of the particularly explosive area lot of safety precaution has to be there all my industry friends they know that they use safety shoes uh, to protect from the electrical hazards but in explosive industries there has to be you know conducting shoe that your body should not get you know charged and even a person enter in the explosive building he had to first arthing himself so even in the different persons we are having different you know Uh, charges uh, uh, in the, in our body so sometimes that can cause the static electricity and it can cause uh, even a touching can make a shock and it can uh, ignite the it can cause ignition source so that's why uh, these three important these three arms are very very important now you see that uh, latest concept is uh, fire tetrahedron i can tell you uh, sometimes some of the uh, chemicals even Uh, people don't know they thought that any uh, that if oxygen is not there it is not flammable but there are some chemicals like some oxidizer like ammonium nitrate ammonium perchlorate they itself carries oxygen so that that does not require any external oxygen if it burns if it starts burning it will burn until uh, it is having uh, chemical oxygen supply in between and there are is uh, you know it's like free radical mechanism there is a chain reaction so if this chain reaction is there then the uh, it is utmost importance to break the chain reaction so that's how the all our development of the extinguishing technology it uh, takes care of the chain reaction so apart from the fire triangles which i discussed my last slide the fire tetrahedron is also an important concept now you see that uh, definition wise uh, in india uh, the our uh, chief controller of explosives uh, cce uh, they are the regulatory body but now it has become peso petroleum explosive safety organization so the atomic energy regulatory body we are uh, regulating we are the uh, like uh, a nuclear industry We are, uh, um, th- there is no factory inspector so we are the inspectors and lead inspectors depending on our expertise we regulate all the nuclear industries because this is a very specialized field so uh, outside inspectors are not allowed and uh, of course the other statutory like boiler inspector by ministry of environment other regulatory body is also there but uh, uh, particularly the as uh, section uh, 16 say competent authority our chairman is the competent authority and you see that peso petroleum safety organization they are uh, b- b- there is one rules is there that is called manufacturing stores imports of hazardous chemicals rules msic rules which talks about all the hazardous chemicals in india particularly it has started uh, long before seveso incident you know that toxic event because if a chemical release if it is a toxic then it is accident but if it is a flammable gas is released then then uh, if you are not uh, if you are lucky enough then it can just uh, disperse it may not ignite even so that is a flammable release not a accident but it is an incident but when it gets an ignition source if it catches fire then it is accident so you see that it fire depends on the flash point then the flammable limit flammable uh, flammable liquid is defined by the nfpa these are again open literature you can see about and the combustible uh, uh, liquid so it has uh, given that liquid which is having flash point less than 37 is uh, normally 37 degree less is called uh, flammable liquids now you see that flammability dependency so as i told that anything which the liquid if it is a uh, flashing then uh, the vapor will form and vapor co- forms uh, ignite vapor uh, gets ignition source and ignite and from this uh, particularly graph if you see this is the if you suppose the uh, the flammable flash point that is sufficient vapor you know sufficient flammable vapor generate 
which can ignite and if you see the fuel concentration for example if i take a suppose a gas uh, uh, cylinder of methane if it is uh, methane is there you know it will not ignite even if i get a, a ignition source it will not ignite because this this, this is the the concentration might be higher than the flame well limit that's why it is called upper flame well that means fuel is too high whereas oxygen supply is comparatively less so it is uh, basically oxygen limiting so now in that this zone also it will not this concentration also it will not ignite whereas in the low very low concentration of fuel so maybe let's say for hydrogen it is 4 to 76 percent so less than 4 percent of hydrogen if you maintain then then uh, then the less than one percent if you went to be on safer side then there is no uh, fire you can find or explosion you can find so that's why the upper limit and lower limit is there for every chemicals and there is a uh, those who are uh, doing research on uh, this fire explosion those who study the msds that is material safety data sheets so that is the under the msic rules in government of india we have uh, uh, given any chemicals it is having all the physical property chemical properties fire and explosion property and the even emergency processes are given in the msds so that msds is having also uh, the another for the toxic again we are following acgis american conference of government of industrial hygiene they are also every year we are, they are doing lot of research and publishing the data of chemicals you can get all the details of the the flash point auto ignition point and auto ignition point is the temperature if a chemical is there then if it uh, ignites uh, uh, if the temperature just if you increasing its uh, temperature beyond which uh, you don't need any even oxygen it will ignite itself so whatever the atmospheric oxygen is there so uh, that is enough to cause the fire so that's why auto ignition point also uh, you should design such a system that never it should never reach auto ignition points now if you see that uh, as i told that effect of you know uh, the parameters on flammability then temperature is one the percentage the fuel is one and the type of compound particularly in the research area sometimes we see that you know they don't know that uh, the all our chemicals in the uh, in the laboratory storeroom they will keep it in alphabetical order like a b c likewise but sometimes some chemicals are not compatible with each other so you have to see which compatible chemicals are not compatible with others that should not be kept together so that's why some of the researchers even in the carrying in the laboratory experiment they make sometimes you know some accident so that's why the type of comp compound and auto ignition temperature material in contact size of the content these are important now you see the lower flame well temperature uh, limit and upper uh, flame well limit which i talked about sometimes also for the explosion it is called lower explosion limit and uh, this uh, uh, evl or upper explosion limit so these are more or less similar but only thing is that fire and explosion difference is the as i told the rate of reaction the explosion rate of reaction is much faster than the the uh, the fire and you see that it is a different hydrocarbons for example particularly the hydrocarbon industry they might be interested you see the lower flammability also depends on the in the hydrocarbon this molecular weight so higher the change it becomes lower because already you are getting more of hydrogen uh, in that in that itself in the hydrocarbon now worldwide if you see the fire you will find that electrical accident electrical accident is uh, uh, fire because of electrical uh, fire is very common almost 23 percent smoking is the another uh, one cause of fire in india of course uh, certain area i found grass fire is also causing uh, fire uh, because people are they are bothering about their plants sometimes you know grass uh, uh, somebody throwing some light i mean lighter i mean the smoking or it can cause the fire the grass fire the friction Sometimes the friction, uh, I will talk about when my case study, I will tell about how the friction can be devastated for an industry. Then uh, uh, overheated materials, hot surface, burner flames, cutting, welding, mechanical sparks, static, static electricity, I was talking about particularly explosive industry, static electricity is very, very important. Now, you see the principal approaches of fire safety. Now, how uh, designed, what are the things you should call? consider the, the, the design like you know it is called defense in depth principle like you know uh, this uh, our mahabharata this obimannu's uh, uh, theory if you see that chakra bhujjo so there is layer of safety has to be there in the fire so that if one layer fails in nuclear industry what happens see one layer 
protection safety is there so if that is not working the second level will be there second level if uh, sometimes if uh, it's not a function in the third level will be there so there will be defense in depth so in the fire defense in depth means it the early detection of fire is first the one thing then the uh, there is a prevention detection and the mitigation these are the three steps now early detection then quick suppression and that the designing of plant of systems should be such that the safety functions should not be jeopardized that is what that particularly in the nuclear examples I, I can tell you like fukushima incident all of you have seen chernobyl you have seen the main function like thermal power plant and nuclear power plant only difference is there it is all about the heat is generated steam is generated and power is uh, i mean because turbine you are moving uh, rotating and i mean uh, the generator uh, you are generating power but the only difference is that the heat produ production method here it is nuclear so nuclear in addition to the because thermal power the coal power other industry if you just put it off plant is off but nuclear industry when if you put it off there is a decay heat is going on and that is the challenge that you have to have cool your reactor so safety function has to be that is the we call it the 3c that is the, the first one is the cooling then the confinement because the radioactivity should not go to the and the control so control of uh, radioactivity then cooling and the confines so these are the safety functions similarly other industries also there has to be this some critical function for example a reactor is running a chemical reactor is there that has to be cooled but otherwise runaway reaction may take place so that safety function should not get disturbed in case of fire or in case of any incident uh, that if that is disturbed then you cannot control a reactor so it is of course nuclear it is of highest priority but all other industry the other uh, uh, lectures i was listening somebody was telling about the lesson learned is not taking care of so lesson learned is the one thing where a nuclear industry if anything happening any when a small near miss incident also that has to be recorded and that has to be shared with all the unit and the common cause uh, if any common cause for like a fire sometimes it, we call it common cause because if you, if fire is occurring there might be two different sensors uh, is there and two different sensors is failing at simultaneously so even though you are giving something on redundant or diversity diversity in design but fire can uh, jeopardize both the safety system that's why you have to see you have to make the compartment we'll i'll talk about my subsequent uh, slide now you see that fire in chemical plants and fire in nuclear plants how it is different now you say uh, all of you might have say, uh, seen uh, that movie chernobyl movie those who have not seen they can just find in the net that the firefighter tendency is there anything is fire is there firefighter will rush to the spot and they will try to put the water but you know that if it is radioactivity is there then that water may also become radioactivity and uh, water may have uh, may, may be contaminated so that's why fire will not spread any radioactive contaminants in chemical plant but nuclear it is there now fire water used in suppression of fire is free from radioactive uh, contamination but fire water used in uh, suppression of fire need to be contained so once you are uh, extinguishing fire that water you should not bother about but in nuclear industry that water has to be contained that because that may become contaminated because of fire now decontamination is not required in the chemical cases whereas in additional thing we have to take care of nuclear industry that is the uh, decontamination of, of uh, water so that's why the uh, the probability as i am telling that probability will be such that in the nuclear case the probability should be very less than 10 to the power minus 6 minus 7 so that it should not happen and you have to give so much of safety systems redundant system diversified system and you have to make compartment and uh, so that uh, it, so it should be very of a remote possibility and uh, i will discuss about the still some of the incident worldwide or in the, uh, india uh, those and how the this is, uh, it is a it is a continual improvement how uh, e there is no chance for the in a complacency in this field safety field and particularly fire and safety field every day you have to think for uh, you have to think for a new and every day you have to be updated now you see the fire safety regulation in india factories act 1948 all uh, as of now it is existing a uh, very soon uh, you will find that our ohsc code is kind of occupational health safety code uh, just the government of india both the parliament it has passed and um, uh, the notifications we are waiting for so all the acts and rules uh, of course will be uh, merged and will be uh, changed shortly but i mean uh, 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 the uh, based on the acts some rule will be uh, modified or uh, uh, updated 
Now, this atomic energy fact is rules. Uh, it is existing, and even in this atomic energy uh, fact is rules, we if you uh, you can Google it, you can find it uh, that all the safety provisions and fire, particularly fire provisions, has been given. And uh, revised fire standard, uh, the AERB, uh, we have developed our fire standard. You can see in the in the figures like each and every field we are developing our codes and standards and codes are mandatory it will not give you how we will do it will tell what uh, what is the requirement design requirement and guide will tell you that how we can achieve that requirement it will be more and explicit and of course standard is furthered in detail so there are three levels of documents we are publishing for the government of india and you see that uh, uh, particularly our nuclear power plant there is a special guide safety guide for pressurized uh, heavy water reactor because these are the, the three types of uh, you know mainly reactors we are having this pressurized heavy water reactor light water reactor and of course prototype fast beta reactor is coming so uh, the safety and fire safety is uh, given top most priority in all these reactors now you see that design aspect in fire prevention that as i told that separation of redundant safety system safety related divisions now there are if two sensors are there then the two sensors should be uh, one is redundant and is uh, one of them should be diversified. Diversified means that the the fundamental principle of that sensor, both the cases might be different. It should be different. So suppose one is you know you know something of for example, you are measuring some you know temperature. So one may be RTD based. Uh, one may be some other you know some infrared technique or some other ways because maybe the rtd may, may not be functional but maybe your optical sensor is working so likewise that uh, it has to be redundant you should have redundant system as well as it has to be diversified system now separate uh, separation of critical areas and non-critical areas suppose something is happening in the non-critical areas for example in the uh, i say thermal power or nuclear power maybe something is happening your say utility area like like you know fire water or pump house it should not come to the nuclear reactor so the, all the critical area should be isolated from the non critical area then the establishing of administrative procedures you should have sop you should have cctv everything your administrative is the one thing which you, you know this unauthorized access sometimes we find that there are having a lot of inquisitive people in the uh, in the in, uh, industry and academic so only authorized people should uh, go and work i can tell you one more examples of course that uh, my research days i found many people they will uh, do uh, i was uh, carrying out some study on the electro hydrodynamics uh, i was applying for the you know high very high electric field to see the uh, deformation of bubble the first thing which i found uh, you know that in the lab is a very sophisticated lab you have every facility but the uh, because the the shoes are not allowed in the lab but you have to work in the very high high you know uh, voltage or current so first thing i put uh, the insulation rubber mat so maybe that that can save people that can save students and it really work so such kind of thing you know you sir you have to think for uh, because sometimes you find that process and safety they should not go together for example another experiment when i was doing some rocket research so i found that uh, suppose the uh, process demands that the signal should be very strong suppose we were doing we are doing some ballistic study and that ballistic study all the thrust we are measuring and all then then the signal cable length as we go away from the the experiment the signal is becoming weaker and weaker where the safety demands lot of safety distance so safety distance is that means sometimes process and safety you may, may may not find it is going together but you have to come to an optimization solution now ventilation ventilation is one area in case of fire it is again a, a debatable thing because if uh, suppose you are sitting in the control rooms and fire happens and if fire propagates to control room that control room can uh, get a uh, smoke but in case of of course nuclear this additional hazard as i told that radioactivity may comes out so immediately fire damper a fusible link should be you know worked and damper should close the you know supply and ex exhaust both but in case of the uh, there is if smoke is generated then that can also suffocate that's why you require the fire hazard analysis you have to see all the provisions so fire hazard analysis one area this is a lot of industry particularly in uh, nuclear industry as an inspector we always any any project anything comes to us the first design thing we we should see the fire hazard analysis i'll talk about fire hazard analysis of course quality assurance another area because the you know uh, like uh, you know FRLS cables or anything that safety 
there is sometimes that safety we cannot compromise on the quality so quality and third party checks is required now see the practical approach practical approach in the industry the fire door i will discuss about fire ratings fire barriers particularly the dg building suppose uh, dg every industry is having a diesel generator they uh, store some you know diesel oil so there has to be some day tank and then the your permanent storage would be different and if day tanks uh, normally we don't allow inside the room if you are putting inside the room then the day tanks would have fire barrier now this frls cable fire stuff fire drill is a, a good thing and uh, i think all the industry they should come to a point to the fire stuff in nuclear industry of course we are keeping two crews for the hour uh, depending on the hazard potential or multiple nuclear we are putting two crews uh, uh, and uh, suppose the less hazard is one crews and likewise we are managing so that fire stuff fire drill requirement everything is you know very much standardized all industries have i'm sure they are having fire order nuclear industries along with the fire order the fire stand they have to follow our fire standard and fire equipment testing fire equipment testing also very categorically our standard is telling that all these equipment how it has to be tested what is the frequency and uh, and, and uh, the even the kind of testing requirement also specified and in addition to that there is a technical specifications of each industry so uh, along with all the critical parameters of uh, uh, their technical spec will tell you the what should be the limiting condition of operation or what will be the limiting safety systems all the interlocks and uh, all the uh, controls and along with that it fire safety also will be given so uh, there are multiple you know defense in depth has given now you see that any industry if you uh, do some risk assessment study then you have to have that uh, system description then uh, the you have to know the systems very well then you have to identify the hazards then you have to see find that what can, what are the scenario it can fail like if 2 inches line is there 4 inches line is there so if a reactor is there so i cannot assume this entire reactor can you know blast maybe i have to find out how to which the weakest link so those kind of things we will find that is scenario then we will do the accident probability that we all you know all the fault tree analysis event tree analysis uh we have done couple of study on the bayesian update uh, model uh, for you know developing the failure frequency rates and that all the failure frequency uh, we can find out for the systems find out the consequence and find out the risk and if you find the acceptable risk in india of course uh, we have developed one uh, what the ministry of environment uh, mof has requested us and we have developed on risk acceptance criteria of course that are not yet implemented it is still at the decision stage so um, but uh, usa we will find us uh, uh, epa or the particularly holland and other industries they are with other countries they are having the acceptable risk in the nuclear of course it is uh, code damage frequency if you tend to the power minus 6 uh, that uh, low order is there but in chemical industry it is not yet established but mof is working and airv also we uh, developed something from them and maybe shortly uh, it will come now we see that if the acceptable risk is the below of uh, this uh, this then uh, the you will operate otherwise if it is not then you have to go and again the uh, redesign so today i will talk about the accident consequence that is the fire fire because my talk is on fire now uh, designed already i discussed about that uh, dg rooms then uh, detectors again i told you that different types of different detectors that is smoke detectors that are uh, uv ir detectors again sometimes you know people put sometimes smoke detectors in the area where a lot of already there is a probability of generating lot of smokes or in the oil actually smoke detectors should not be put such area maybe thermal detector is better or where the rate of rise temperature is there temperature rise that is the thermal detectors are better and uv ir detector we found it is always you know uh, better compared to i mean uh, of course it is little costly but uh it is better compared to other detectors and uh, you have to find it out sometimes the position of the detector so many cases we found that even the detectors are given but uh, that area itself is uh, when fire is occurring that is not being detected so that's why the design stage so anything you know fire hazard analysis has to be done it has to be seen in three stages one from the design stage one for the commissioning stage and one any modifications if they are in the plant that time also it is to be uh, checked again now you see design aspects with the sprinkler and water spray systems fire hydrant stand uh, pipe and hose systems these are the and sprinkler again uh, our fire standards we have the high velocity water spray systems 
medium velocity and fire hydrant hose system because the idea is that any fire uh, line is there fire hydrant system is there the top most top most point that 3.5 kg per centimeter square that uh, uh, pressure that water pressure has to be there so many times you know that fire hydrant system design you have to uh, see because that uh, ultimately that is the one you know mitigating measures uh, because in the case, case of fire most of the cases 90 percent cases or 95 percent cases water is the media fire can help you to mitigating the fire event now you see that fire hazard analysis i was telling about you that fire hazard analysis uh, the, actually uh, it is very important for any project suppose any new project is uh, uh, coming then first thing uh, or any even in the research area also some any uh, thing explosions uh, or fire related projects you are doing you have to see that what are the fire hazards in that plan now you see that i will discuss how to calculate the fire hazards now fire hazards the, you have to see what are the combustible materials and the combustible load that is power unit area and you have to that is the one is the you know if you don't have uh, that of uh, i mean uh, infrastructure to check the details uh, then at least you should have idea of you know fundamental use the fundamental principle and try to calculate the combustible material load and the power area and there is a bureau of indian standards where many of our uh, we are also participating in bbis uh, standard development and we have specified that a particular uh, load what should be the you know the the the, the fire uh, requirement that uh, the fire mitigating requirement you should see that bis standards and uh, in nuclear industries we are doing little more because the how smoke is propagating how uh, temperature is propagating whether it is uh, if hypothetical fire is coming then you have to do some computational fluid dynamics cfd model and you have to see whether really it is affecting on your safety system or not now in the fire hazard analysis okay there are two type of approach one is called fire containment approach one is called fire influence approach now in the con containment approach you can see in the figure here suppose these are the red uh, uh, this uh, block you can see it may have two three safety uh, systems like for example nuclear reactor suppose a uh, uh, you know you are uh, cooling a reactor suppose emergency core cooling systems or maybe your control rods so these are the some safety systems so suppose the safety systems are there then the fire should not so in this uh, fire containment approach it assume that all the different uh, you know fire safety systems are in the same compartment and uh, uh, so in that case suppose if you are in the so if you can design a plant this all the this uh, safety systems in the same compartment then you have to do fire influence in approach which i'll talk in the next slide but in the fire containment approach what happens this two different fire suppose fire is occurring if this safety systems two redundant safety systems are there then one safety system should be there in another compartment because in case of fire if something happens in this compartment then this other safety system should be available which can help you and save your plant so that is the containment approach here we are not taking any credit of fire detectors or fire suppression system we are assuming that fire is as uh, happening fire is fire has occurred and this entire safety systems are uh, this fire this compartment everything is lost but fire should not that uh, come out to the others uh, compartment and this compartment should be the safe so that is the fire containment approach and this is a deterministic approach where we are assuming that a, a deterministic fire has occurred and uh, and uh, everything is uh, no credit has given on the any fire mitigating measures and other compartment we have to see whether any fire is propagating or not that is the fire containment approach and the another approach that is the most practical approach that is if you are uh, that is called fire influence approach here what happens that the safety systems are here here we are taking credits of all the fire detector fire mitigations and if fire if any ignition source is there now if fire is happening then we have to use our cfd technique and we have to see how far that uh, the smoke can propagate what is the temperature for fire and whether really uh, if it is uh, this fire can uh, fire this fire is uh, getting you know contact to other safety systems in the same compartment so that is called fire influence approach and accordingly you have to put the fire barriers and you have to see the you know functionality of your safety systems now you see that uh, as i told that uh, any barrier you want to put the first things you have to see the fire ratings again bureau of indian standards bis codes uh, is available 
you can see the fire rating now you see that uh, this is the graph this is the graph it is a temperature time temperature time curve for any particular chemicals or any material if you want to study so for, for example if i want to study if i want to put a fire door let's say that a battery room is there battery you know battery room uh, can generate some kind of hydrogen you have to see that if any fire is occurring that a fire should not come out of that room so fire door should prevent now in that fire door prevent how you can design the rating so you this is a standard curve so all the country they have come up with a, a particular temperature time curve where you know in some furnace that some temperature will be gradually increasing and there will be a barrier and you can see that uh, that these three things are important one is the fire rating one is the stability so if you are putting a suppose a fire door then stability will see that how at what up to what time in the it is withstanding the fire and the structure is not degraded or it is not being collapsed so uh, one is the insulation insulation how you can put suppose if there is any crack is there if any crack is coming and because of the crack uh, if if uh, some flavor mixture or something is fire is coming outside of the say that barrier and if uh, you are putting a cotton things and if that cotton is getting burned and you are telling that insulation has failed similarly the integrity that is the one is the integrity one is the integrity integrity that crack should not develop and the stability stability means the basically for example still uh, normally it is uh, uh, taken care of the more than 550 degrees temperature is reached that means it can collapse so that particularly steel concrete that uh, any structure is there the stability part is also there so you see that uh, how we can uh, calculate basically the temperature time curve is there so uh, this temperature time curve that area under the uh, area under this uh, curve actually give the severity now in real time fire because initially there will be you know uh, they, once the fire starts then it uh, gradually the fire temperature increase and ultimately the fuel will be consumed because standard time curve there will be uh, uh, no dart of you know no uh, i mean uh, uh, there, there is enough fuel is ab available so it is continuous increasing uh, trend will be there but in real time fire ultimately either it will be oxygen limiting or it can be fuel limiting so fire will be gradually extinguishing itself so that's why there will be decreasing so if i want to compare with the standard uh, it has to be compared always with the uh, standard time temperature curve so area of this uh, your fire experiment uh, curve that area has to be uh, equated with the standard temperature curve and you have to find it out up to what uh, temperature it can withstand the it can it can maintain all the three criteria that is what i talked about insulation stability and integrity now you see that classifications of fire so uh, uh, there are four classifications of fire that is class a fire that is it uh, no, combustibles like any solid fire class b is the flammable liquids that is in all paints grease solvents class c is the gaseous fire and class d is uh, you know fire in metals metal fire so metal fire is very uh, difficult to handle because sometimes you know aluminium powders have uh, come across zirconium uh, powders they are very devastating i mean zirconium uh, powder uh, fire uh, even in the you know waste burning or in the throwing in the air it can catch fire and that can propagate uh, fire and zirconium temperature sometimes it can reach to 800 degrees uh, per centigrade and very difficult to uh, you know uh, save uh, if a person is uh, nearby so that's why metal fire of course there is a special type of fire extinguisher called ternary eutectic chloride so firemen should not put water immediately because many times instead of you know uh, uh, extinguishing fire it can aggravate the fire so fire in metal is really a challenging field and then uh, there is of course the fire flavor liquid and particularly gaseous you use co2 fire and solid fire always you know water type or gas expelled water type is preferable now you see that fire and explosion of models now uh, uh, you might have heard about the iocl jaipur fire or the <clears throat> some other uh, you know uh, like a texas uh, uh, fire so many cases if you see that some releases occurred but ultimately what happens as, as i told if uh, releases occurred and uh, if you are enough i mean uh, lucky enough they, it has not found any ignition so there, there is no fire so that's why if release is happening and if immediately ignite so immediately ignite there can be two types of fire one could be jet fire and another could be called uh, pool fire 
Now, if it is uh, not immediately fire, it is dispersed, and after sometimes maybe after four or five minutes, it is a fire. Then it can be you know the flash fire, or it can be some you know kind of you know vapor cloud explosion. And also, there is another kind of explosion is called blevy, boiling liquid expanding vapor explosions. That also I will. Uh, talk about now. You see that vapor cloud explosions. You you might have heard of it. IOCL Jaipur fire. That is also that is the only one uh, fire accident in India. You can find every analysis, uh, even Bhopal analysis. You will not find uh, much in, uh, in in the internet. Whereas IOCL Jaipur fire, you can search in the Google. You will find lot of you know analysis on this. So that vapor cloud explosions uh, it happens because all of you know that uh, some. Uh, this motor operated valve and hammer blind valve some leakage was there and because it may it uh, some uh, flavel cloud has uh, uh, developed and this uh, this flavel cloud once it got ignite and that is called vapor cloud explosions now normally for explosions there is a requirement for the confinement but in this unconfined vapor this is actually unconfined vapor explosion as you are seeing it is releasing to the atmosphere even though there is explosion because it is a kind of kind of misnomer because the cloud is not able to disperse itself so the energy is releasing suddenly and there is you know the pressure wise a shock wave generated and in this particular case if you study you will find that shock uh, the pressure Generated more than one atmospheric. That is, I mean, I am talking about gauge pressure. So that uh, that is over peak over pressure generated. And you know, if 0.5 uh, atmosphere pressure uh, over pressure can generate, it can throw even the loaded truck, loaded truck or loaded wagon. It can overturn. So you can uh, you can understand the kind of you know explosion it occurs. And uh, of course, uh, in this case, all of you know this uh, almost 11, 12 fatality was there. Now you see, jet fire is another fire that is also very uh, uh, peculiar kind of fire. Where maybe a small hole is there, and particularly in the hydrocarbon industries, they found this kind of you know accident. Uh, accident. So jet fire, the very high pressurized liquid comes out, and uh, if it finds ignition source, then it will catch fire, and this uh, the fire will go back to the source. Because it will follow the uh, projectile and it will go back the source and it will create a havoc. So that's why jet fire more than the fire, yeah, the domino we call it is a domino effect. That is actually uh, more uh, prominent in jet fire. Now, if you want to uh, model the jet fire, you have to find it out. You know, first wh what is the discharge rate? There is lot of you know consequences, uh, consequence ma analysis model which I will not able to cover in this short time. Then you have to calculate the flame height. Uh, then you have to find it out, uh, uh, estimate point of source location, estimate the radi radiant fractions, how much you know heat is coming out, then the V factors that are out of how much energy the person is uh, receiving or that particular uh, distance you are getting, and that the transmittivity equation, and then incident and radiant uh, flux equation, and you have to calculate the thermal flux. Now you see that jet fire. Jet fire, uh, you can uh, uh, see that all the L by D ratio. There are the best. Uh, I always prefer the fundamental models, but there are also empirical models which you can uh, calculate that uh, L by D, that is length of the you know, turbulent flame and the diameter. If you know all these material and physical property, you can calculate. But it will overestimate. But uh, the, the idea, the 3D model or the uh, CFD model is best. But you can calculate here. Also, the if you know the if you calculate the transmittivity, if you know the the total amount of heat release and the V factor, if you calculate, then you can find it out how much radiant flux. Now, just to give you an idea, if you typically stand in a scorching heat of sun, you will get around 1.5 to uh, maybe two kilowatt per meter square. But this particular you know any kind of fire, any kind of fire. If it occurs, you know the surface heat flux will be order of 300, uh, you know, particularly blevy or you know pool fire, maybe around of 300 kilowatt per meter square. So a uh, human being, just for uh, giving an idea, our first degree burn will be around say 12 kilowatt per meter square. Second degree burn will be around 24 kilowatt per meter square, and third degree burn is about you know 36 kilowatt per meter square. Or if you Talk about in terms of joule, maybe five degree. I mean, you consider around 10 seconds, maybe around say 125, you know, kilojoule per meter square. So that much of you know heat. So you see that 12 kilowatt per meter square will give you in the 
first degree burn whereas the fire case 300 kilowatt per meter square so you can understand that lethality so the immediate even the iocl jaipur cup of hair case also you have found that that lethal so it can so because of the the thermal heat flux calculation in the fire model is very very important now jet fire model is not very well developed and flame impeachment as i told that in the refinery or in the chemical industry when we calculate so one vessel to another vessel the intervessel distance uh, we calculate based on the uh, this if any uh, scenario we consider it should not come the more than 5 kilowatt per meter square so intervessel spacing is also important then two phase model because if any high, highly compressed liquid is there and if it is a you know uh, some gas uh, is uh, compressed and liquefied when it comes out uh, it can be the two phase that two phase modeling is a little difficult so of course there are two phase models are there we are we are using the consequence analysis now in the flash fire as i told that it is little bit of delay fire not immediately fire the release has occurred and after sometimes it is catching fire that is called flash fire it is non explosive combustion because the pressure uh, wave or the uh, shock wave will not generate but the thermal heat flux will cause uh, and this major headers from the flame by flash fire is the thermal radiation and direct flame contact so as i told that 300 kilowatt per meter square and if person is uh, you know threshold limit is maybe first degree burn 12 kilowatt per meter square so that's for all our design calculation we will not allow more than 5 kilowatt per meter square for the design so safety distance we have to calculate in such a way that uh, it will not occur uh, more than uh, 5 kilowatt per meter square now you see the development of pool fire this is a special kind of fire particularly again a, a refinery or hydrochemical i mean uh, the hydrocarbon industries where the lot of you know uh, liquid like kerosene petrol diesel or so this side uh, of liquid is being stored so normally we provide a dike uh, so dike what happens if it is uh, leaked the so dike will be it is a dike is designed in such a way that uh, it will take care of the entire amount of liquid so that uh, height whatever liquid is uh, and if it can, finds a fire source then it can catch fire so it becomes the blue pool fire you can see that when it is becoming pool fire you see that how vapor cloud is uh, expanding and you see that it is finding an ignition source it is catching fire you see how the flash fire is taking place and in fact if you want, if you want to model then first thing what we calculate is the how much you know burn rate this uh, how much you know this uh, because the time as i told this thermal heat flux and when we calculate you know the effect model like one is consequence more analysis another is uh, the one which we are calculating the thermal heat plug i mean the release after that we are calculating how much it is dispersing and then we are finding the you know the effect model or the probit model so there we the input is the how much the thermal heat flux is coming and the uh, the time so this will govern that vertical burning rate we have to find it out and there are some mathematical model through which you can calculate the, uh, for the mass burning rate and the the pool fire characteristics how it is propagating and there are of course there is another you know model uh, which we also use sometimes that is called you know dow and mont that is dow index and uh, that is of course the insurance industry they are mostly using but these are also you know uh, 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 model where you can find it out the fire hazards or the material hazards now you see that full fire models if you see the flow diagram first you have to calculate that vertical burning or the mass burning then you have to calculate the flame height and then you have to calculate you know, the, the diameter of the pools so normally if it is open ground and there is no dike is there that one centimeter height we will assume that that much of liquid it will have and we calculate depending on the all the you know atmospheric constraints or the mass transfer everything we can calculate how much it is the flashing is occurring and the uh, ultimately how much heat flux it can cause and of course there are two models are available uh, that we use that is solid flow model and the points model and finally you calculate the thermal heat flux now you see that burning of course some uh, empirical correlations are there but uh, i always advise to use you know 3d model that will give you the, the, the clear cut picture now you see that pool fire pool size also some empirical study uh, is, uh, is being done and sometimes also it can be used now the uh, again the pool fire model if you calculate all the uh, the you know the uh, total energy or the heat flux then we can uh, use the transmissivity and the view factor we can 
uh, use the point source model and the point source model is a model where entire uh, fire is there you have to you are considering this entire amount of fuel is uh, confined to a particular uh, points that is comparatively easy to calculate but it it will give you an you know, overestimate result the solid food model will take care of the geometry of the fire now you see that uh, pool fire thermal radiations now a thermal radiation if you see uh, you can see that uh, you know thermal radiation and the view factor we can calculate and the transmissivity and if we calculate the total heat flux and if you use the the proper v factor then we can calculate how much radiation thermal radiation as i was talking about uh, you the 12.5 kilowatt per meter square or 24 kilowatt per meter that kind of you know values where it is reaching and the as i was talking the inter department inter uh, uh, spatial distance of sls that is 5 kilowatt per meter square of where it is coming so the uh, based on that only we can calculate uh, the safety distance now you see the type of explosions now type of explosion if you see i have shown you the uh, uh, there is actually interesting story in fact so, so some uh, uh, i mean terrorist organization uh, somewhere you know people uh, uh, they uh, wanted to make a explosions and uh, they uh, declared beforehand that okay we will do we will explode the mall or something so some uh, curious i mean uh, curious uh, journalists they wanted to see uh, how explosion effect but you see that explosion effect they wanted to photograph so this you know, when the explosion is occurring the after you know the microsecond phenomena that explosion over pressure will come so that explosion over pressure as i was telling that even 0.5 atmosphere uh, atmosphere over pressure can overturn a, a loaded wagon so you can see that so uh, it can happen so, so that explosion over pressure is very very dangerous so that uh, the, those journalists they tried to see uh that uh, the, the effect of explosions and all they wanted to photograph it, but there is a explosion just after the peak over pressure there will be you know uh, because of inertia will find there is a, a temporary vacuum will be there so that vacuum because of that particularly the glass window so after explosion you will find that all the uh, uh, because of this uh, low pressure the all the glass window will be shattered and is this a microsecond phenomena you can see that this deflagration deflagration you will get little more time so that's why deflagration is a very fast burning but the shock wave the, the the pressure wave will not be there as the detonation so this is the deflagration so uh, the curve and um, i'll tell some incident also so now uh, one uh, research area i found, i came to know that uh, they were doing some kind of a you know, research explosive research and they were trying to you know do some operations and where the you know the static uh, static charge they wanted to remove from the metal core from the explosive mixtures and they, they are just uh, the there's sop tells about that after removing the the casting or they have to remove the metal and while removing that there is a gasket and then some amount of explosive mixture was you know uh, attached with that and because of this small friction the entire thing got exploded you know so so that's why static charge is again an explosion area is very very important while designing you have to see that you have to design even a gasket even the, all the contact points are very very important now we see the blevy is a <coughs> model uh, there is some uh, internationally the some accident happened because of blevy what happened normally if you design a uh, vessels uh, you can think of you know how much temperature it can with all the structural property you can uh, the, you can calculate the thickness and all but in case of uh, suppose this is a vessels okay it is having particularly again refinery or hydrochemical industries or other chemical industry where the lot of you know uh, the flammable material is being stored you know that this is the uh, suppose tank and the liquid is there and the fire is externally it is coming now externally when it is touching the, the vessel so again because of the domino effect because of this fire what happens this fuel will try to boil itself now it will vaporize now once the heat is there this will take take the initial heat load here but in the vapor space it will have the thermal capacity will be less than the liquid and here the air actually absorption and heat will be less so entire amount of heat will be absorbed on the 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 container container now this container material what happens even it is observed that even also uh, uh, reaching that uh, you know that yield stress before the yield stress also this will fail so this entire amount of flammable mixture will come out as a cloud and that cloud will you know the the, the cloud will uh, make a explosions 
and uh, there are some you know such type of explosions occurs in a particularly lpg fire lpg gases internationally there are you know blevy uh, explosion has occurred so when you want to do the model you have to find it out what is the blevy size that is the cloud size then you have to see find it out duration how much time it can uh, stay and estimate surface uh, emitted uh, the flux estimate the geometric uh, view factor and then you have to see the atmospheric transmittivity so some, it is also function of how much humidity of the atmosphere if fire is occurring you know more the humidity uh, your transmittivity will be less so that's why if it is a dry uh, humid uh, dry uh, atmosphere condition then the atmospheric transmittivity is will be much higher so that's why the estimated thermal heat flux also will be higher so those are things you have to model and again uh, mathematically some empirical models are uh, uh, the, you can do it, but uh, again, it will little uh, overestimate because the, as I told that uh, it is true for some particular hydrocarbon. So you have to see the very specifically. That's why the uh, CFD model is better, where you can you can uh, simulate the exact scenario. So if you the calculate the time of uh, Blevy, then you have to calculate the how much you know explosions uh, the the uh, energy will be released. Because if you know the, all the heat combustions, then the uh, radius and the fractions, then you can calculate and based on the transmittivity and view factor, you can calculate the amount of you know the, the thermal heat flux. Now we see that explosions also there are several models. So I'll discuss two one or two models for you. So what is the TNT model? So TNT model is uh, worldwide is very familiar like you know uh, what are hardness we measure in terms of calcium carbonate here also explosives any explosive you use it is always uh, you could measured in, in terms of tnt equivalent trinito toluene so here what you have to calculate you have to find the mass of explosive like propane or butane or any explosives you uh, have in uh, mixtures you take and then if you know the heat of combustion and if you, uh, you uh, find it out the equivalent tnt you use that equivalent tnt heat of combustion and you can uh, come out with the uh, equivalent uh, uh, amount of TNT. And if you so researchers has found that uh, this overpressure is a function of, you know, some kind of cube root of the weight of the uh, explosives. So they have a, a graph. So where you can find it out, the scale distance, you have to find it out. That is, uh, and then from the scale distance, you can find out the scaled overpressures. Now you can see, as I was telling you, that uh, to get an idea, suppose uh, atmospheric pressure is around 14.7 uh, psi, you can see even one psi is uh, sufficient enough. If explosion is happened, then the pressure wave can knock you out. So any individual can be thrown because of this uh, one psi, and you know that five psi pressure that uh, it can rupture an eardrum, and you can see that around 15 psi or uh, atmosphere it is uh, damaging the lungs. So that is becoming the lethal and more you go higher. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, of course, 65 PSI of 99% fatality. And of course, there will be probability 15 PSI. There will be, you know, probability of uh, fatality will be there. Now you see that uh, the, if you see the equipment, so 0.5 PSI, as I was telling, uh, it can, it can certain uh, so glass window. It is a glass window can be broken. Uh, one to two PSI, you can see that common sliding uh, types fails. 2 to 3 PSI on the reinforced concrete, a block wall can fail. 3 to 4 PSI, you can see that when the self M steel panel buildings can collapse. And 7 PSI, that is almost a half of uh, you know, atmospheric and uh, loaded rail cars can overturn. So, this is having tremendous you know, structural damage. Now, the, these fire simulations, uh, if you, as I was all the time talking about the fire simulations, it's better. But uh, you have to develop some kind of expertise so that you can uh, really uh, see, see the how smoke will care. But you can really put all the thermocouples and the, all the extinguishing media, whatever you have, and the fire barrier, everything. And you can uh, find the ignition source. So basically, you can calculate based on the heat release rate or the mass burning rate or some kind of you know, heat input you give in the flame thing and find out how smoke is propagating, how fire is propagating. You can see that uh, analytical model uh, the fundamental, if you use the first principle, you can calculate the fire load and you can calculate the heat release rate. And typical output, you can temperature rise or the uh, you can calculate. There is another model that is called zone model. 
that is uh, some uh, scientist mqh uh, 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 they have developed a correlation and it is always seen that any fire is happening so normally there will be cold layer and there will be hot layer so top you know the flammable gases will come and then it will you know the, it will heat the all the cables and all the uh, top you know the floor and you can see that uh, the you can find that uh, through mqh correlation you can find out the hot uh, temperature so a uh, structural damage you can find it out upon the building so whatever the concrete and the steel so you can find it out what temperature it can as i told that 550 degree normally is uh, considered to be damaged uh, damaging condition so how much time it can withstand what is the, the temperature for pile and all that even zone model you can use ideally is the most ideal is the field model where you can use the conservation of mass momentum and uh, mass momentum and uh, these things uh, energy uh, spaces and the cfd model so uh, that cfd models you can find it out even the all the gaseous uh, not only the temperature even the all the compositions of uh, chemicals suppose carbon dioxide carbon dioxide these gases what should be the concentration what could be the spo uh, smoke uh, and uh, the such suffocation everything you can study total heat flux surface tension temperature smoke everything you can study now in the cfd model if you want to study then you have to uh, uh, use the continuity equation you have to uh, solve the navier stokes the momentum equation navier stokes equation and you have to solve the energy equations and you have to use the uh, your geometry your boundary conditions and one of the study we have done for one of the for examples one system you can see that uh, here was some methanol is there it's a cleaning media and we assume that uh, some fire is occurred now so we wanted to study this is a critical system uh, and that is actually uh, the effect of this system because there will be you know some kind of insulations will be there barrier will be the weather what temperature whether it can damage the insulation or not this study we have done <clears throat> and we can see how the temperature profile you know they will they, they but the only cfd model the challenges is the meshing so even the more the finer mesh more the computation time but again you know uh, this is a turbulence model if you want to use if you take the bigger mesh you may not capture the incident so that's why you have to find the optimizing mess i uh, have to uh, find it out the optimized mess, uh, when you select such a way and then you can find it out you have to do some sensitivity analysis and you can calculate you know temperature profile velocity profile and uh, 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 you can re uh, simulate the real scenario so i'll discuss about some case studies so that i think uh, how much time i have by 10 uh, officer maithi another another yeah, 5 yeah, minutes <laughs> another 5 minutes so another 5 minutes i'll i'll cover i'll cover i'll cover no problem so you know the, this is the any types of process uh, uh, expert whatever we discuss this is a typical uh, uh, cases you know all of you uh, many of you know i think that is the flix boro explosions you see that uh, one of the tank actually uh, uh, it, it was leaking they just removed and they decided to connect uh, this is this is the uh, connect with the whatever pipeline they have in the stores and uh, all of you know that uh, the uh, explosions occurs because the this pipeline leak, uh, leaked and uh, some uh, around i think cyclo xn or so is uh, leaked actually and it caused you know fire so that's why the design modification any design modification in the industry we do this is the one case study where it, uh, taught us that uh, you should just uh, by you know the plan discuss and this here what happened in the shop floor managers and they decided to replace and they want to run the plant just to replace the i mean uh, uh, they bypass the vessels and they just connected and because of this this accident happened so any design any changes you do as i told that fha is important fire hazard analysis is important similarly you have to see the design modification has to be checked by the proper process expert now you see that fukushima the lesson learned just i want to give you because it's a recent case all of you know that uh, that uh, you know 1970s if you see that uh, around the safety culture we, we started with the 79 uh, the tmi incident we talked about lot about the training safety training then chernobyl we talked about the safety cultures 
And after this Fukushima, we thought that safety training is also there, safety culture is also there. And uh, even that this accident happening, then we found that it is a human organization and technological factor, HOT factors. Uh, we have published quite a monographs also on this and we tried to sensitize. Here you can see that uh, this, uh, you know, this when the common cause uh, when the because of tsunami, uh, the, this uh, the design basis flood level, what they assume uh, as per design around six meter, but actually what had occurred is around eleven meter, and because of this uh, water came and this when the water uh, entered into the plant building, the DG. So the fire the uh, in the nuclear reactor there will be three levels of you know power supply. One will be the class four power supply that is the common grid. Second level will be your DG and third will be inverter and fourth level will be battery. So second, the, the most, the power, uh, uh, whenever the external power, the grid power lost, uh, then immediately they try to start the DG. But DG got submerged and, you know, uh, then there's, there, there, there's a challenge. Of course, they could the, achieve the safety function, they could stop the plant, but they could not cool the plant, you know, because the ultimately we found that DG got uh, uh, submerged and DG power was not there and ultimately battery also got exhausted and uh, that's how the uh, no, uh, the loss of uh, cooling accident locax uh, happened and all of you know that this zirconium uh, is uh, there because zro2 is there as the fuel clad and that reacted with water and that's a you know uh, hydrogen generated and because of the hydrogen explosion you can see this happened at the reactors so this is uh, happened even after all the uh, there are uh, uh, so much of safety precautions and all. That's why uh, uh, this lesson learned immediately all our nuclear reactors. We have see, checked the design versus flood level. DG also, we have made in a high level DG fire water requirement. Immediately additional water and the seismic, of course, seismic uh, 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 trip, everything is incorporated. And along with that, the emergency process, as we told that, what should be the, our emergency criteria? Because, you know, immediately, you know, the removing people is not a good option. You have to have very optimizing condition, particularly country like India. So we are really prepared uh, for all the lesson learned. As I told that uh, has been taken care of in India. And uh, uh, many of you know that about Chernobyl, you know about the TMI or just I talked about the Fukushima. So Brown Ferry is the one uh, nuclear fire because of many of you may not be able to know that uh, this has happened in 1975. What happened? This is the one area where the all the nuclear community learned about the fire. What happened in the, uh, there was a reactor one, two and three was there. And reactor one and two was operating at three where they were just constructing. So they were trying to lay all the cables and in nuclear reactor, any building would be there. So always it will be having negative pressure. So it should not have positive pressure because there is something radioactivity should not come out to the environment. So that has to be always the content. So always it has to be negative pressure. So when they were taking the cable, so one from the one fire compartment to another compartment, compartment there was a ceiling is there that is polyurethane ceiling. And they were checking with the ceiling with the uh, some candle and they were just blowing air and they're checking whether the candle is moving or not and whether the ceiling is intact or not. While doing so, it got uh, caught fire and as I told that the entire cable got uh, fire, caught fire and then cable sp spreading room is there. Cable spreading room also got got fired. So immediately, all the control rooms, this all the instrument sensors got you know uh, all wrong signals, all started smoke, all chaos, and they immediately tried to uh, the, douse the fire. By they thought that okay. Uh, we will put the CO2 extinguishers uh, because the CO2 flooding system, the plant is designed in so, such a typical safety level that all the hazards they considered that, 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 that their primary heat transport system, if it fails, fire, pipeline ruptures, all these safety precautions has given. But they, they didn't thought of small fire can cause such a havoc and almost seven hours there was no power and all. And uh, because of that, uh, when they found that they want to put the, they found that CO2 systems is available. They want to put CO2 system, but they could not make it on because design is made in such a way that if person is available, then CO2 cannot be started. So they evacuated, they tried to put CO2, but it could not co uh, quench the cable fire. Then firemen came, firemen told, see, look, I am having water. 
Uh, that's what I can do. I am more than that. I cannot do. So I feel tell I can use the fire, but they thought it's a very, you know, uh, sophisticated event. So much of money involved. They initially was reacting to put water, but ultimately they allowed to put water and they could quench the uh, uh, fire. But you know, seven hours is difficulty, and the entire uh, uh, nuclear industry and other industries they learned that even the even the high voltage line is there, high voltage up there, or EHB line is there, or the instrumentation line, they should not be put together. And even if we put together, put EHB on the top, the high voltage. So fire is there, that should not affect the cable. And all our plants, we are uh, immediately uh, designed in such a way that all our in, uh, the inspection also, we told that all instrument line has to be separate. So that, and uh, as I told that all the fire compartment, the fire influence approach has to be followed. So a lot of lesson learned has been taken care. Of. And you see that uh, one of the inspe uh, inspections I made on the uh, other nuclear, other than uh, non-nuclear industries, uh, I told uh, because uh, uh, this is you know, one of the uh, uh, audit team when I was there, so here is a typical textile industries where you know uh, happened in the, uh, the long back almost 19 years back so the the owner itself was uh, sitting in the plant and he was having maybe 10 15 uh, people with him and uh, they were using you know uh, the petroleum ether petroleum ether was actually uh, uh, singeing um, they were doing singeing operation because all of them, you might have seen that that uh, the cottons and the woolen things, whichever is coming out from your shirt and pant. If uh, those things, they wanted to put some flame and then to put it, uh, you know, uh, aesthetically, they want to improve the cotton. Uh, that was the operation. And they were storing some petroleum ether. And when this explosion, uh, this tea vendor came, he, when we interviewed, we found a tea vendor came. At uh, that time, he was still, everything was normal. But after that, certainly explosion occurred. All these people uh, died and building collapsed. And when, while investigated, we found only six liter of petroleum ether was there. So you can see that vapor cloud uh, explosion can be possible. And uh, the uh, ignition source is, uh, you have to see all the time, anything can happen, any smoking. And if anything uh, happened if between the lower flame limit and upper flame limit, then ignition uh, can and explosion also can be possible if confinement is there. Now you see the another explosions uh, while I was there in the investigation team, so uh, while uh, that is a uh, explosion occurred in the some uh, uh, private industries in Nasik, they were making some mine explosives, uh, uh, gelatin explosive, and they were using some uh, ammonium nitrate, real ammonium nitrate is very sensitive. Even the Pakistan also, uh, there was some ammonium nitrate storage was there, and in the store itself, you know, there's a critical diameter exists in the such kind of explosives. Well, yeah, as I told, inbuilt oxygen is available. You don't require to any ignition source. While dumping itself, it forms a weak crater. So uh, explosion and weak crater in the uh, ammonium nitrate. So it's very critical. So they were using ammonium nitrate and then they were thinking of uh, processing that gelatin tip and there's a screw, screw conveyor belt was there. So when the accident happened and uh, all the Ministry of Home Affairs and when the team has been conducted when the audit team we investigated the plant it's uh, then we found that entire three story building uh, exploded and there's formed a big crater and when uh, uh, and when only one or two surviving persons so we interviewed then uh, we came to know that any uh, plant anything any explosion happened that always gives some kind of indication so one the uh, difficult thing i found that the process man itself he himself you know uh, tackling care of safety. So that is one of the, uh, that should not be advisable for any industry. We always try to make safety as an independent. So that uh, 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 I think industry people, they are doing that, you should insist. And then we found while I calculated, back calculated the explosion overpressure nearby village and their roof got exploded and all the glass shattered, exploded, I mean, uh, shattered, uh, broken. So explosion, when I tried to back calculate the explosion, uh, how much explosive quantity was there, then I found that it is, they were storing much more uh, uh, than the permissible limit. That is because they were thinking they were producing some batch by batch and they were thinking to uh, transfer after a little, after a time when the entire batch or the transport arrangement will come. And the most difficult part we could found that the owner left and the DM taken over the, uh, the, the emergency situation. So such a explosion is such a uh, dangerous thing. So you have to take care from the design stage. And you see the conclusion is that fire safety in the industries uh, can ensure uh, th thorough robust design principle like defense in depth, which I explained. 
and then high standard of safety can be achieved achieved through fire hazard analysis the not only fire order but fire hazard analysis has to be there high reliability because wherever critical system and the reliability and quality are uh, should be there and eliminating at least uh, you have to see that i could not explain because of the shortest uh, time other there is a flammable uh, along with the flammable uh, tangle there is a also flammable lot of flammable uh, limits diagrams are there so uh, you have to see that that particular flammable zone it should not come you ca I cannot remove all the time of you know ignition energy you have to see that uh, that flammable uh, mixture should not come how that there are some techniques are available to make it and that facility management community and ultimately the top management copy uh, because safety is not a cost uh, thing but, but actually it is a uh, you know, profit for the industry if you manage properly and uh, you, your aim should be a zero accident and uh, I hope that I could give you some idea on the fire modeling and the fire theory and the overview of the fire in nuclear industry and other industries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we can uh, discuss anything doubts if you have. Thank you, Dr. Dikendu. It was excellent explanation of you know this uh, fire incidences along with the case studies. Case studies were very very relevant. So I will now request uh, Sovik or Ashish to take over for the Q and A session. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, thank you, Dr. Das, for this uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, we have a lot of queries in the chat box. So I'll take some of them one by one. So the first query is, in a steel company, we have many toxic as well as flammable uh, gases, examples like cocoa one blast, uh, blast waste gas. Sometimes fire catches without any fire source also. What yeah. are the latest techniques to, fi to fight gas fire? Yeah, that's what I was telling that uh, even without ignition source, there is a, if uh, if a gas is flowing or the fluid is flowing, there always there will be a friction and there will be static charge. Now you have to see that uh, you have to design in such a way that uh, minimum friction should be there and uh, the material uh, compatibility also you have to see you have to see the insulation uh, proper insulation should be there and so that any internal source and also i told that sometimes some chemicals having inbuilt oxygen it uh, does not require the in oxygen from outside so that's why while designing you have to uh, take care of because it is a very case to case specific that particular chemical property you have to study first then only we can decide but yeah but the idea is that you have to see that no static, uh, if it is explosives, explosive mixture is there. That's what I told. There is a flammability limit diagram is there. So at any uh, conditions, for example, I can give you a methane uh, gas cylinder is there. If you open 100% gas cylinder is there, then it will not explode. But if you open it and slowly it allowed to some leak is happening, then air will come and at some concentration, you will find it is falling within LFL and UFL. And if it gets some ignition source or some fire, it can catch fire. So we have to limit that conditions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So the next question is, how should we deploy firefighting team in case of fire to a radioactive facility when the radiation source is open or live or even in natural radiation source? Yeah, it's a very good question. So uh, as I told you that, uh, uh, of course, Nowadays, all water sprinkler rains, their automatic you know, CO2 flooding system is there, that is called Cardox system. So, uh, intelligent fire detection system is designed in the critical areas such a way, in case of fire, the automatic and of course, uh, you know, that uh, the just in giving you an idea suppose a uh, reactor is there you know the typically 1000 megawatt reactor is there so you said say that one percent uh once is put off the fire maybe uh, maybe one percent two percent of, of, of that means that means around 100 uh, megawatt immediately it will happen that much of decay it would be there after sometimes it is exponentially decay and then uh, the radioactivity will be i mean the uh, the things will come down so you have to fireman has to wait for the radioactive thing and you have to use automatic uh, thing and uh, it is always uh, being done in consultation with health physics unit where health physics unit that radioactive any radioactive is not a dangerous thing for example every day you take banana 
So banana is having a lot of radioactivity things. K40 is there. And uh, even the uh, cosmic radiations we are getting. So you see that uh, the, our atmosphere is having radioactivity and we are susceptible to the radioactivity. So any radioactivity is not there. If you maintain a distance and your health physics is allowing such a low dose, uh, nothing will happen, then people can uh, do that. But of course, uh, if Chernobyl movie, if you see that firemen came to the core of the reactor and uh, tried to douse the fire, that kind of thing is not advisable. Always it has to be consulted with the health physics and the permissible limit why that because it is a time distance and ceiling phenomena you allow more time to uh, decay and then uh, distance maintain the distance or maintain some ceiling either of these three is used and then based on the permissible thing you can do it can, it can be done and it is uh, being done for small fire and of course the critical area normally uh, it is uh, so well protected as i was discussing our defense in depth so uh, all the defense has given so that Nowadays, these automatic things also being put up like cardioxide system or carbon dioxide system. So manual intervention will be less. Yeah. I hope uh, uh, I clarified. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was clarified. So the next question is, uh, what will be the extinguishing medium of hydrogen fire? If fire catches in turbine where it is cooled by hydrogen, then okay. what will be the action of fire mitigation? Yes. So, you know, the hydrogen fire is uh, uh, one one thing is you can limit the ventilation, the oxygen, and uh, uh, particularly turbine fire. So, CO2 also you can use CO2. And uh, people have used uh, such a case uh, CO2. So, uh, yes, sir. Uh, the thank you. We are taking one more last question. How yeah. are machine learning techniques being implemented in fire safety in nuclear plants? Yeah, uh, uh, you are, uh, this is a good uh, uh, research area. Machine learning technique also because, you know, the fire PSA, we are doing the fire probability uh, safety analysis where all the data of historical data and the measure data are being used. And it is worldwide, uh, it is using, and in India also, we are doing fire probabilistic study where the uh, learning thing. But uh, anyway, still, it is in uh, RD stage, and uh, of course, the probabilistic safety analysis is being used. Thank you, sir. Thank you for nice explanation. Yeah. Now, I would like to hand over the session to. Um, Hello. Yes. What happened to you? There? Okay. Okay. Dr. Divyendu Das, this is uh, OB Krishna. Yes, sir. Uh, how do how do I really thank you? I'm I'm totally mesmerized. Your talk started with the fire basics, fire fire risk assessments, systems, everything. You 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 were flowing like a Ganga River. You know, the knowledge is flowing. So I'm really happy with pro probably I have to see two, three times your video again, your talk again to understand minutely. Yes. So you have covered so many things, so many subjects you have covered. You have addressed uh, research issues. You have, you have addressed uh, practical uh, practitioners issues. It's a, it's a really a talk which could be, which could be enjoyed by all the, all the people, academicians as well as, uh, uh, the practitioners. Thank you. Thank you very much. As, you see, you. as, as we said, um, COE uh, will work with you. We will work, we'll work jointly. All your, uh, all your, uh, what do you call, visions or missions which you thought were not fulfilled. We are here uh, uh, to fulfill all your visions. We work together for the, for the, um, for the safety of the people, for the safety of the property so that they will live, especially, I just want to ask you one thing. Yes. The nuclear standards which India follow. Yes. The nuclear uh, standards implemented and monitored are equal to the Western countries? Yes, yes, because you see that uh, uh, yeah, in the nuclear industry particularly, uh, we are uh, International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA is giving some guidelines 
and uh, in conventional of nuclear safety because it is a nuclear industry means anything happening it is a transboundary effect is there so where all country will see the good practices of other and if any lacuna is there for example you know that our neighboring countries uh, always uh, they are more uh, in inquisitive about our research and all so you know that any particular platform whenever we are ge getting for the cns abroad so we are presenting all our uh, you know fire or safety or nuclear safety process safety everything is de de detailed discussed and we have to present and everywhere we are giving even in the net also you can find it out our cns report and it is at par with the uh, uh, international standard and uh, iaa and us nrc we are having uh, uh, regular you know mou we are having at even france regulatory even japan one of world atomic nuclear operators we are all together and our lessons learned are shared with each country and one is giving very good remarks about india so every year they are visiting iea you know international atomic energy they are visiting us and in fact our level is so high that even some countries are who they are developing nuclear they are taking our help when you might be knowing that bangladesh is coming uh the indonesia coming so there are many uh, countries they are coming for the nuclear they are taking expertise from us yes yeah thank you thank you in between you you also uh, you also told a word the learning is not there people are telling you don't take the i that, that's i i appreciate the learning of the people industry is very high that's what i feel yeah, always yeah we see that uh so in uh, some of one of your uh, talk i think Uh, one professor somebody told that uh, india not happening is not good because uh, every industry they are trying their level best we know that human organization and technological factor so sometimes it is happening that we are trying to see the immediate uh, uh, the cause root cause but actually it is having some latent weakness in the organization so Correct. that point we are trying to establish but uh, of course india is not doing that i am totally disagree there a lot of happening and that's why you see that uh, almost 30 years in nuclear industry we are uh, doing and almost you know our safety records are very good and it is all appreciated thank you thank Bye. you dr das you have motivated me you have motivated the indian people yeah. thank you very much yeah. and my thanks to all the audience though it is it is the uh, fire is a very very difficult subject you you stayed back and heard uh, dr das and the my my team who is monitoring all, all these things uh, my, uh, mom and her team is the, they did a good job professor professor maithi thank you very much you are clapping i know you are clapping for dr dr das i know not for me thank you much <laughs> thank you all thank you thank you all we'll meet next uh, next friday again yeah yeah thanks a lot thank you sir thank you thank you all dr so das we will be in touch thank you yeah. sir thank you yeah, sir yeah. thank you very yeah. informative lecture sir yeah thanks a lot yeah thank, thank you, you. Thank thank you. you. Uh, yeah good night good night